Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for, for joining us in our IMG webinar series today. Um, today we have DocuSign and Wildlinks here to, to talk about the integration between Content Manager and the, the, the DocuSign um, uh, products. They've worked very close together, hand in hand, uh, building this integration and making it, um, I guess, as strong as it is today. Um, and they will be talking to, I guess, the benefits um, of the combined solution within, within the public sector. So we don't have Duncan Stewart, but Fraser Burton here today from DocuSign to speak, um, and Carl Duncan from, um, uh, from, from one of our key partners, Wildlinks. Um, on that, I, oh yes, with any questions, please post them into the question box, um, and Carl and Fraser will, will answer those at the end of the session today. Um, on that, I'm gonna hand over to Fraser at this stage. Thank you. Thanks, Edward. So, um, yeah, I guess for today's agenda, we're going to look at the um, DocuSign Agreement Cloud for public sector. Uh, we're then going to bring everything together on how DocuSign and MicroFocus uh, can work together and, and what Wildlinks have pulled together um, to help that integration and make it a seamless process end to end. Um, we're going to run through a customer success to hopefully give you guys a sense of um, how it could fit into your business. Um, and then we'll open up to some Q&A and then um, point you towards some key resources. Uh, can you just go to the next slide? So one thing to think about is agreements are everywhere. So uh, most of the people here today are, are, are within the public sector and the work that we've done, we've identified over 8,000 uh, agreements across um, across government and the different levels within government. Uh, everyone does agreements every day. Um, so while we're running through this, just have a think about how you engage the public, how you engage different agencies, how you you know generally go about doing your work and where there is opportunity um, to look at uh, optimising and digitising agreements. Um, you know, one thing that we see uh, really across what we call a system of agreement is, you know, the ability to prepare, sign, act and actually manage agreements. Uh, at the moment, it's very manumatic, um, lots of uh, error prone um, uh, agreements that come in from, you know, uh, the public, from um, lots of rework. Lots of, you know, if you've ever done a contract, um, it's typically lots of email threads, uh, people lose track changes, there's delayed decisions. So, you know, that whole preparation, we can look at how we can optimise that, put good governance around it and uh, and get rid of a lot of errors. So, uh, and, you know, when we're doing manual process and paper-based processes, having to sign, um, one, of, one of the couple of good things of, of, of COVID, one being ability to work from home, but also it's driven a lot of changes in legislation and they're now permanent. So the before it was very hard to actually move to a digital process um, that involves signatures and uh, most um, jurisdictions have implemented the opportunity to, to actually look at um, uh, legal uh, digital signatures so that, that allows us to do a lot of things. And it's not just about the squiggle, it's actually about everything that happens before that, that signature um, and everything that happens um, after. So, uh, and most importantly, it's being able to have a, a legal document that's certified with an audit trail of, of who's actually seen, um, authorised and you know, signed off on agreements. Uh, the other area is um, <clears throat> uh, being a paper-based um, sort of process, uh, paper gets lost pretty easily. So actually being able to digitise it and again, wrap that governance around to when a system does um, trigger an event, uh, then the follow-on events to actually, you know, put it into the right retention, um, trigger other um, systems, take information from those digitised documents, actually put them into systems of record. All those things start to become opportunities to get rid of the manumatic um, uh, you know, taking of, of, of physical forms and then trying to digitise them into various systems. Again, prone to error um, and, you know, very inefficient. Uh, and then we can start to do, you know, cool things like um, payments. So, you know, we can automate payments. Um, we can do things like ID verification these days. We're tied into 
um, systems uh, like the, the uh, digital verification service if you've used MyGov. Um, so there's lots of opportunity again to look at that whole end-to-end -end of um, actually digitising a document, getting it signed and then doing something with it. And most importantly, which leads on to what we're here today to look at too, is how do we how do we actually manage that? How do we, um, you know, again, get that governance end to end and leverage systems like um, uh, like Content Manager? So one of the key things with, with DocuSign um, and why it fits for government, uh, and again, I mentioned it's not just the squiggle. Um, we have a contract lifecycle management system that can um, <clears throat> basically work with uh, standardising how templates are created. Um, we can centralise that from a legal point of view. Uh, we can generate documents uh, automatically based on information coming in from uh, whether it be your constituents, whether it be internal parties. Um, and then, you know, end to end within the document, DocuSign Agreement Cloud, we've, we're integrated with uh, you know, over 350 uh, core systems of records. So, you know, whether it be SAP, uh, MicroFocus um, uh, Content Manager, um, you know, Oracle, uh, there's loads of um, pre built integrations that, again, enable us to take it end to end. Um, and, again, and it's not just that squiggle. So, um, that's something really to think about is there's a lot of times where people have tried to look at digital signatures um, and there's a big difference where not all um, you know agreement uh, solutions are um, the same so uh, a lot of freemium has been in place for some time uh, but this is an enterprise solution it's cloud-based that you can easily integrate to and, and again achieve that digital transformation end-to-end -end. The other key area is um, security. Um, it's really important. This documentation is is absolutely um, paramount for um, from a security point of view. Uh, we have been IRAP assessed across the DocuSign uh, Agreement Cloud, um, and from a um, from an information staying in country perspective, uh, that's that's a key um, uh, functionality that's required for for government, as you guys know. So uh, that, this slide gives you a sense of just some of the security um, standards and, and audits that have gone in place to, um, to, to achieve that. Just quickly, um, this is a little bit of a beach of chess slide, but I, the, the main thing to take away is that we are working with, with government, um, really keen to understand where your challenges are around um, agreements. Uh, from a you know, local point of view, we've been proven from a security point of view, again, we've ticked that box. Uh, we have contracts in place um, that can be leveraged. Uh, for example, Queensland government, recently we put a standing offer arrangement in place. So procurement can be optimised. Uh, the same story with MAV in Victoria, um, uh, where that can be leveraged by local councils. So uh, yeah, great. If you've got those challenges, um, yeah, we've managed to sort of break down some of the procurement challenges around um, uh, getting access to software too. So um, without uh, further ado, we'll, we'll sort of jump into a bit more about um, how uh, e-signature can actually work. Carl's going to run through how it can work with um, Content Manager. And uh, again, you know, it's great to be here with um, uh, and invited to, to talk about how, uh, you know, MicroFocus, DocuSign and, and WildLinks can work together. So with that, I'll hand over to you, Carl. Thanks, Rosa. Appreciate that. Um, as Fraser said, just going to talk through a little bit about our history and how we sort of came to date. Um, and actually, we're very similar to a lot of entities that we, um, I suppose, work with and talk to. We actually went to market ourselves. <laughs> um, we went out looking for an e-signature e solution partner. Um, the reason we did that is back in um, 2019, it seems so long ago, but um, we, we actually went to find something that would work with Content Manager. So. The reason for this, and we went and looked at all the, you know, quote, quote, top solutions, um, but we saw that there was a need for our clients who might have been using, you know, workflow or action tracking or any of those types of functions where they actually then wanted to extend that and do that whole signature bit because we had clients that were physically driving, you know, um, signed agreements from my house to your house to Fraser's to a dam to wherever, like it was just all this manual process that we kept uh, kept seeing. So we went out looking for uh, an e-signature solution. Um, we ended up choosing DocuSign and became a partner in 2019. 
we actually then went through the out of the box um, integration that comes with Content Manager um, and, and DocuSign, it was written a while ago. Um, and we actually went through and deployed that and then we found lots of problems with it. Um, and when I say problems, there was um, things like um, you could only send one document. You had to have a, it was based on the document review and authorization feature within Content Manager, for anyone who knows what that is. Um, it required certain um, high level permissions as well. And long story short, as we went through that with a client, we took them through a test environment and then into prod, um, we, we found that, that we could probably do something better. So we ended up creating our own integration as a bespoke sort of integration. We worked with the DocuSign team and we really sort of, again, they had that footprint and, and work, working with and talking with a lot of government entities. So we, again, leveraged them for our, our I suppose, our user stories for the integration. Um, fast forwarding a little bit, we then became a reseller. We launched our integration in, in March last year. Um, and then we, we also do any sort of consulting with DocuSign now as well. So be it onboarding, process work, because again, it's very similar for us, we believe, taking a process and putting it into Content Manager, it's the same as putting it into DocuSign. So started working with, uh, again, a lot of different parties with DocuSign, again, making sure they get the best of their, um, their investment in DocuSign and also Content Manager. So our, our integration um, does two things. The first one is this little pretty picture. Um, so pretty much it allows a user to send a document uh, or documents, plural, uh, from Content Manager into or through our integration, which is installed within your environment. So that's just the key thing that sort of comes up often. We're not the middleman that's getting a copy of every single document from all the different clients. The, the integration we have built is actually installed on your Content Manager infrastructure. Um, so again, it communicates securely with DocuSign directly and we're Switzerland. Um, we're just the ones that have got the plumbing and, and the, the, I suppose the middleware, um, but we don't actually see any of that stuff as well, again, from a security perspective. It allows them to send it through to DocuSign. Once it's in DocuSign, again, DocuSign is DocuSign. So again, you'll see this shortly when we go through a bit of a demo, but um, we don't restrict DocuSign in any sense of the word. If you can do template matching, all those things that DocuSign is great for, and if you haven't used it, you'll see a little bit of it today. Um, again, all of that is within DocuSign. And then once the document's actually been complete, so it's gone through a process and, and that document is actually been completed or that envelope is complete, we then do uh, a couple of things. We bring those documents back into Content Manager automatically. So again, stops the user having to manually do it, um, uploading it and downloading it or leaving it on a network drive or in their email and never putting that contract back in, which is something we found often. Um, the other thing, and Duncan, um, I mean, sorry, Fraser just talked about this before. Um, around that certificate of completion, which we'll show as well. So again, we um, we actually bring that certificate of completion back into Content Manager. So you've got the signed document and the legal evidence right next to each other. Again, just something that came up um, from user stories from clients. The other thing we do, um, and this is, you know, in a perfect world, I like to say that everything starts and, and you know, may end or finish in Trim or in Content Manager. Um, however, <laughs> uh, talking, uh, talking with Fraser, Duncan and the team, we, we ended up looking at that you know, there are other organizations that might be using DocuSign differently. So as an example, that um, an envelope or a, or a process might not start in Content Manager. Um, bit of a shock for the Content Manager people in the room, but um, potentially it could sort of start in Salesforce. You might be using it with Dynamics or Office 365. And ideally what our integration um, we've built to um, allow to do is actually what we call a funnel and funnel that into Content Manager. Because again, just because it doesn't start in CM, doesn't mean it shouldn't end in CM. And again, if you're signing off on procurements, contracts, anything like that in Dynamics or Salesforce, again, there still is a good governance reason why you want to save them directly into Content Manager. So again, our integration is twofold from CM, and then if it doesn't start in CM, you can also capture it there as well. Um, some of the things when we go through this process is, you know, you might have a process now already in relation to, I suppose, drafting these uh, documents and these agreements that Fraser talked about. Um, again, most things that end up in Trim um, will probably be match one of those criteria. And you can still use the out-of-the-box micro-focus functionality. So again, you might assemble a contract, review it, deliver the contract back and forth, negotiate it, and then use the integration to execute the contract. So again, you can do Okay, this could be a workflow, this could be an action tracking process, it could be anything along those lines for you to use. So quick little run through of our integration. Um, so again, just got a document in here in Content Manager. I can right click and say send to DocuSign for CM. Um, I'm so lazy or efficient, so I've got a button on my ribbon. Uh, again, make life a little bit easier. 
So as part of this process, this is going through our integration uh, or to, from the user's computer into uh, your server through our integration and then off to DocuSign. So this is what you would go through if you were, I suppose, um, sending an envelope or going through that sending view. This is DocuSign for those that haven't seen it. You can mark up the document. This is where you can add the dates, the signatures, email addresses, company, all the data that DocuSign is. This is, again, fully fledged, all open DocuSign. And once you actually send that document, it's often sent. So DocuSign now has that document. We, as the integration, step away from it. It's now in DocuSign to go through the process. This process here is actually me as a, I suppose, a reviewer. So this could be an internal or external person. It dates either or. Um, and this is actually me signing the document and endorsing it and finishing it. So that's just, again, a really quick view of how, you've, um, how you can, I suppose, sign something in DocuSign. Um, and once that's actually done, we bring the document back into Content Manager um, with the relevant signature as well. So this happens automatically. It creates a revision of the document. Um, so you might have a Word document first and then a PDF revision on top. And we actually bring that legal document back in. You'll also see that it's got the, the demo um, environment as well. It's we've been set up, but that document itself automatically comes back into Content Manager without the user doing anything. And that's one of the big key things. Now that, that was one document. It could be 10 documents you send for signature. It really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's any document that gets sent through the integration will automatically come back um, as part of that process once it's complete. The other thing, as Fraser talked about, is this certificate of completion. So one of the things that make DocuSign a little bit different to other e solutions, as Fraser mentioned, is all of this legal evidence. Um, now, not many people know this thing exists uh, within DocuSign if you've already been using it. But again, this is the Carl signed it at this point in time, my geolocation, whether I've used a phone, a computer, whatever it may be, the when I sent it, when it was viewed, all those things, this is the legal evidence that goes with it. And again, uh, in this example, that was just me sending it once, but if there was three or four people here, we'd have three or four people's, again, um, signature events or signer events as part of this process. And here, what we do is we actually, again, this is configurable, but most of our clients have turned this on for a very good reason. Um, we actually then bring that certificate of completion back into Content Manager as a rendition on the record. So again, revision being the latest PDF, that's the one that's actually, again, the, the signed document. And then the rendition is the actual document here where, again, this certificate of completion is there. And again, this came from a user story from one of our clients um, because they didn't want to have to, you know, if <clears throat> shit hits the fan, pardon the French, um, that uh, they didn't want to have to go into DocuSign to find who did what, when and how. They might have the signed document, but they didn't want to have to keep going back in and forth to DocuSign and, and go hunting for this. So in this example, again, we bring both those back in and, and they can view that directly from within Content Manager made the legal people happy. <laughs> so one of our, um, I suppose, customer stories um, is Fremantle Ports. So again, the, these challenge and solution outcomes are very similar for a lot of clients that we see, but um, for Freo Ports, um, again, they, weren't, they wanted all of their documents to be saved into Content Manager. They didn't want, again, like a lot of clients we see that are using DocuSign where it's saved on a network drive or saved in Carl's email and it's not actually, um, I suppose, used or in the correct spot. Um, they went to market to find a, an eSig solution that allowed them to work directly with Content Manager. Now that was one of the key requirements and it's one of the ones that you know Fraser and I and the DocuSign team always continue to keep seeing is that integration with Content Manager is that key requirement for, um, for that e-signature solution. Um, so again, obviously from the solution perspective, uh, they chose DocuSign and also chose us as the integration partner um, and I helped them implement it um, so that they could actually solve both their challenges. So they chose the, the premium e-signature solution being DocuSign and then our integration to be the middleware to do that for them to, to save their user effort. Now for Fremantle Ports, um, we actually implemented this in 9.4. Um, they then went, um, we upgraded them to CM10 uh, earlier this year. Um, so again, they've had both versions that, that, that we've um, created as part of that. And by the end of this year, they should probably roughly send approximately 500 envelopes through the integration. So again, they're not a massive client in the space. They're only using it for procurement and, and signing contracts and, and legal documents, which again, is a great first use case. Um, but again, by the end of this year, they would have actually put that many through the integration um, internally. And from the user's perspective, Super happy not having to do anything. It just comes back in when it needs to uh, and it sends out directly from within Content Manager. So again, no having to take it locally, no having to do all that user process, just using the integration between the two products. 
Um, we recently just, um, as of a couple of weeks ago, actually signed a quite a large council in New South Wales. Um, and again, very similar sort of challenge. Um, they again wanted, went out to market, they went out looking last year, um, looking for all different e-signature solutions, went and tested the water with a number of them. Um, and then again, earlier, or just recently, ended up choosing uh, DocuSign and, and Wildlinks to, to actually, I suppose, fit that need again. So again, solution for them, which they're actually going through implementation and speaking to the team as uh, today, actually. But um, again, working through implementing the, our integration into their content manager or trim environment. And for these guys, they've got about 10,000 contracts or, or envelopes they're going to be sending. Um, so quite a large, um, I suppose, throughput in that space. And they're going to be using it for everything from internal approvals and signing signatures for, again, briefs, approvals, procurement activities, HR activities, uh, even looking to use it for development requests, which is a, a common one for a lot of local councils where you're interacting with a developer and you don't want to have to print, sign, scan and, and do that whole thing again. Um, so you, again, using that, uh, that integration and DocuSign to achieve that. Um, so some of the frequently asked questions that we get, um, and again, um, <clears throat> if anyone has any questions, and there's a couple that have just popped in, but um, again, just drop those into the question section, and again, happy to, to make this again as live and interactive as, as we can. Um, but some of the questions we often get, and, and it's whether Fraser or I get it, it's still the same sort of questions, but um, you know, there is a template feature within DocuSign. So again, the templating feature allows you to have a template and if you send the same sort of structured document every single time, you can actually pre-populate, pre-match and, and pre-have all the signature spots already done. Um, so one of the questions we have is around, you know, can we still use that template feature in DocuSign? And the answer is yes, 100%. <laughs> um, again, DocuSign is DocuSign. We respect everything that DocuSign does and, and the value that it adds to our clients. So again, our integration just works directly with that. Same with the next question around branding and, and um, um, custom branding within DocuSign. Again, no, no difference there. All of that can be used directly in DocuSign and you can have a brand applied. So you don't have to have the DocuSign blue and blue, white and yellow, I think it is, Fraser. Um, you can have a bright orange and black Wild Links logo um, if, if that's your colour scheme uh, or whatever you wish in that space as well. Um, how long does it take to set up? Um, great question, uh, comes up often. Um, so again, what happens and, and tends to happen is this can be as quick as uh, a couple of weeks or it can be as long as a couple of months. Um, and what often happens, depending on if you've already established DocuSign and you already know what you're doing and your processes and, and stuff are happening, then we can just slip, slip in and, and get that working pretty quickly. Um, if you haven't, like the, the brand new counselor who just signed on last um, two weeks ago, um, for them, they're still trying to work out how they change their processes from the old way to the new way. <laughs> uh, and the integration is, is a, I suppose, a core component of that. Um, but again, normally I would say a, an integration would go anywhere from a couple of weeks to potentially three months, depending on, again, when they want to implement it. Um, the process is pretty straightforward from a DocuSign perspective and a, and a content manager perspective, but it just comes down to the, the appetite for that organisation. Um, Fraser, anything from a DocuSign perspective, how long people can enable from, from where to go? Uh, no, no, I mean, from, um, really depends on how complex the process is. I mean, simple processes, like you mentioned earlier, like the internal uh, approvals, I mean, that can take, you know, an hour basically to set up a template that's simple, apply um, signatures, very basic um, workflows that can be repeated. Um, you know, they, they can, if you're, if you're a master at it, you can take you half an hour to set that up. We work with um, some really complex uh, workflows. So ones that could be, uh, for example, in the health context, it might be someone coming in for an appendectomy um, where it's a guided form that's basically very complex. Um, we might need a doctor's signature. So there's external parties. So, um, you know, that's a much different story, which, um, and then there's integrations that we need to, to manage, um, uh, you know, across that process where there might be multiple systems. So that's, that's sort of going to one extreme um, to the other, but, um, you know, really we've got, you know, again, partners like um, Wildlinks that can, can help um, address that. We've also got professional services um, uh, locally that can work with the Wildlinks team. Um, so, yeah, um, it really comes down to what's the um, what's the use case. Um, we, we would recommend, um, you know, and an excellent one here is around content manager because that gives you a good sense about where signatures are actually being, um, you know, typically what you want to retain. 
Um, so, you know, going inside that, looking at the high volume, sort of low efficiency type ones, that's a really good place to start. Mm. Um, and one of the questions that come up often is um, how data is encrypted at rest or at transit. So, Fraser, you want us to talk from a DocuSign perspective and I'll talk from an integration perspective? Um, I, I, I'm not a techo, so I'm going to let you handle that one, Carl. <laughs> there you go. Um, so DocuSign um, itself, again, encrypted at rest, uh, as, as Fraser talked about before, um, Security Center um, on their website explains all how the integrations work, uh, sorry, how, how DocuSign works, how it is secure, all those types of things. From a integration perspective, because this, this comes up often, um, our integration sits in your environment, so your true environment comes into play here, a little bit about how it's secure and, and is, is it secure in that space. When it's communicating from your environment to DocuSign, one of the, the key things is we've built our integration to be um, compliant to TL, TLS uh, 1.3. Uh, DocuSign's API at the moment, and I think that's looking to change later this year, is uh, 1.2. Um, so again, from our integration, it's going to be um, 1.3. Once you get into DocuSign, it's then going to go down to 1.2, but it's still quite a high level integration and a lot better than the 1.0s, 1.1s. Um, so again, all secure directly via the API uh, and lots of different ways that we can authenticate within that. A couple of questions came through. So the question is, how is DS4CM licensed? I love that someone else has come up with the acronym that I have internally. <laughs> um, great question. Um, so our integration is, or uh, well, the costing for our integration is, is $6,000. So it is a credit card swipe. Uh, it's a 12 month subscription to, to the licensing and to the platform. So license every 12 months. Um, we then have two different, I suppose, um, assistance packages or, or um, I sort of get you started with um, the integration. So one of them being a remote session where we work on Teams or Zoom or, or something of the equivalent to actually help you install it. There's actually a fair few components because you need to know DocuSign, um, you need to have access to your Trim servers and you've got to understand Trim or Content Manager. So there's normally about three or four parties unless the DocuSign admin is is all of those people and in some cases CM people get gifted DocuSign as an admin functionality. Um, so the remote install again, very light touch, we actually help you do it. Um, the last option is the turnkey project. Um, a lot more clients actually prefer this because they literally go, hey Carl and team, your problem, uh, set it up, get it working. Um, obviously we need access to your environment to do that. So we need access to your DocuSign environment, we're going to need access to your content manager environment and remote access to be able to do that. So but we actually run that as a project, we attend the cabs, we give you all the documentation, we work through that with you. And there's normally a little bit of effort left over in that to sort of take a process from Trim through our integration and into DocuSign as well. So we tend to sort of help out how that sort of works. Because again, most some people, not sure how that would sort of work from a Trim perspective of when they put the document in and how that works. So again, we work through that as a, as a bit of a team. Uh, so Scott had a question, is there a way to store the certificate of completion as a separate record and not a rendition? Um, great question, Scott. At this point, no. Um, definitely something for a future, um, I suppose, roadmap item and um, user story. Because um, at the moment, it is sitting on the, the back of the actual rendition. So again, if there's five documents sent, the certificate of completion sits on all five documents. Um, the reason, and, and it makes it a little bit more challenging, is everyone, everyone's content manager environment is slightly different. They all have different record types. They all have different entry requirements for fields and metadata. Um, <clears throat> so to actually store it as a separate record, we need to sort of take some of those things into account, which becomes a bit of a challenge. But um, again, great, great thing. And we can definitely put that on the, the roadmap. The good thing is um, our integration, how we're building it is we're not building, you know, a water bottle for each different customer. It's one, one integration platform, one code base. Uh, with the ability to configure it. So again, that this would just allow us to have a configuration option as part of that. Um, so Martin, you've asked a question around CM10. Uh, we'll have integration with Microsoft 365 Teams, Outlook, SharePoint, ETC. How do we see this working together? Great question. So um, it's actually come up a couple of times. Um, so natively out of the box, DocuSign integrates to, again, I think there's 400 different connectors and platforms that we talked about before. So one of them is Microsoft um, and, and all of those things definitely have integration. They've got a little integration to Teams, they've got an integration to, um, to SharePoint, all those types of things as well. So uh, again, if I go back to the original example, just here, you might choose this option. Um, you might actually integrate directly with the SharePoint out of the box or the Microsoft um, Teams new integration in 10.1 um, and, and not use the integration. But again, that's going to be driven on a user doing it um, or you having some very clear defined rules. So 
one of the integrations with the SharePoint um, or with SharePoint and DocuSign is you can send a document from SharePoint to DocuSign and it can come back and put it back into that SharePoint library. Um, so again, you could actually integrate to that point in time. It just, again, depends on is that where you want it to sit or do you want it to come into Content Manager? And uh, one of my favorite sayings is users will be users. So, um, you know, trusting a user versus having this set up in the, in the background, it's gonna sort of work behind the scenes. So a couple of different options there that we've talked through with a couple of clients. Um, really just depends on sort of what's, what's best and, and what works for you. Um, Ralph, you had a question. So is Trim Workflow a prerequisite? It is certainly not. Um, you can literally, it's as simple as sending, um, you don't need to have a workflow or, or pre predefined steps at action tracking a workflow. You can literally go right click, send to, and send it directly to um, DocuSign. You don't have to have any of the workflows or action tracking set up. Some clients do, and that's what they prefer and like, but you do not have, do, definitely do not have to do that. You can just go sign that uh, and send it off to Fraser and, and so forth and so on. So, yeah, definitely, again, that sort of light touch, depending on what you wanted to do. Um, so this just here as an example, that right click send to there um, can be done and doesn't need any sort of um, workflow or action tracking attached to it as part of that process. Um, cool, just having a quick look through any other questions. Um, is there anything else from your perspective? No, I think, I mean, again, like it's the call to action is really for people just to be aware of what agreements are within Content Manager. Um, you know, if they've got any questions on legislation, et cetera, we can certainly help with what's the art of the possible these days, and it's always changing. Um, and it, it is different by jurisdiction, so um, but happy to help with that. We've got, um, we work with some lobbying firms who are, who are making those changes with government on a, on a daily basis. Um, and yeah, um, I, th I think it's really the, just get in touch with us and we can talk through what's the art of the possible. Hmm. No, perfect. That's great. Well, thank Happy. you, Fraser. And thank you, Carl. Um, it was great to, great to hear about the integration and how you've advanced, you know, the out of the box into, um, something that works really well. And Carl, mm -hmm. I do love your comment. As long as everything ends up in content manager. <laughs> Correct. All of that. Thumbs up to that one. <laughs> um, uh, so thanks again, guys. Um, this is actually the last session in our IMG webinar series, um, but I did want to highlight to everyone that we have our annual flagship IMG customer forum coming up in September. It's on the seventh and the eighth. Um, uh, it's it, it, it's it's jam packed. Um, so we've got Simon Fruit, who's the new uh, DG of National Archives, as our keynote speaker on day one. We'll have our very popular Ask the Experts session um, back again uh, uh, with, with that team. Our R and D team um, will also be providing an update on Content Manager, and importantly, customer stories and um, and, and awards around that. Um, and then the, so the event is on the 7th and the 8th of September. Um, and then at the end of the second day, at the 8th of September, we've got cocktail events as well. So uh, Brisbane, Canberra, Sydney and Melbourne. So we'd love to see you uh, at those events as well. Great way in person to celebrate the awards um, and, and, and do, some, do, do some networking. So please do join us for those two days and, and, and the cocktail drinks. Um, and on that, I'll just say thanks again, Carl and Fraser, and, and reach out with your questions um, to, to the team and, 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 and to us as well. Thank, Thank you.